Hey viewers, today I'm going to add another layer of watercolour to this painting. It's already had two layers of watercolour and two layers of masking fluid. There's the original masking fluid and that's the second masking fluid layer. And you can tell that's the second because it's kind of a little bit uh, transparent and also not covered in any paint. You can see also that I have tipped on a beautiful turquoise and then I've tipped on a beautiful uh, pinky colour and now it's time to add a final layer. So you may recall that I've been using Dr. P.H. Martin Hydrus. They reconstituted beautifully. I've been working into this tray and pouring the excess colour into the tray. So in my jar here is the remnants of the um, last pours. So that beautiful greeny colour and the beautiful pinky colour and that's the result of it there. Oh, that is feeling very strange. Oh, I just had to check it was going to come off. Oof. But also, since I'm going to be tipping it out of there, take this opportunity to add a little bit of sparkle. So to add sparkle, there's a whole range of products that you can buy. I'm just going to gently tip. This one is called Chameleon Powder and it's from the Sparkle Premium range. What was funny about this is that it, I bought it on uh, Timu and it was completely misrepresented. That's looking very red. That's all right. So it's a ready grey colour. It's, that will add beautiful sparkle to this final layer. I'm using the tray to collect up the paint and I'll just get rid of all the colours. And before I wet it, I'm going to decide on the colour. So I don't need any more red because I'm going to use this red sparkle. But if you're wondering exactly what I used, I'll put a link down below to the previous video and that describes everything. Okay, here's the joyous part. I just love doing this, doing that. Oh, I just, I just love it. I could do that all day long. Okay, and now I'm going to add in some turquoise. I'll put it over there, I think. Okay. Um, I think what I'll do actually is I'll just tip that off, rotate it round, and then I'll get some of this colour distributed up there. Oh. Oh my, look at that, how beautiful is that? So what will happen if I, oh, there's no color, come on. There, there's a bit, oh, uh-oh. I shook it too much. I've gotten these really big bubbles here, just bursting the bubble. <laughs> well, the turquoise is really beautiful. This line here is too hard. It doesn't go with the organic nature of the rest. These ones are so beautiful up there. That, that's nice there. I love that. So let's get that going on down there. Rotate and tip and shake just to encourage it to come down. I need to hold it up because it's not tipping. Okay, let's get it happening from up there. That's nice. Just want to lovely softness over here. Big dollop there, I will spread around a bit. Tipping it in all directions now. I want it all soft on the edge, I don't want lots of colour. So spray it off and tip it in the opposite direction. Right, what else do I want to do? That is even more beautiful than that, so I'm going to get it to come down here. and do the same thing. Very intense there, don't want too much intensity. And I'm going to do the same thing, spray off the bottom. Uh, get rid of the excess and tip it in the opposite direction. How is it looking now? I think it's looking pretty good. I sprayed here, I sprayed here, I put the turquoise that side and it's um, gone that way and I can feel that there is a leaf tip there and I don't want anyone's eye being taken up in that direction so I'm just going to grab this put it on the other side so that hopefully you go in 
this direction back into the design. I'm just going to let that sit for a second and it can do something beautiful all on its own. I'll just put the whole thing in view. Just while I'm putting the lid on, it's a great moment to uh, start to think about the design. You have to use your imagination a fair bit at this point in the project because the masking fluid is really hard to determine what that's going to look like when you take it off. But you can see the bones of the composition, uh, even though they're pink and they're not going to be at the end. So that's the first thing to keep in mind is that pink is going to turn into a slightly different colour and some of it will turn into white. So you want to think to yourself, have I got enough whites? And yes, I do. Um, have I got enough mid-tones? Yes, I do. And as usual, the question is really, do I have enough darks? So especially in watercolour, that's often the question. So what I'm going to just consider from a, a moment is to squint my eyes and have a little look at it and decide, has it got enough dark? So yeah, I think it does actually. I don't know how light this turquoise is going to dry because I'm not super familiar with it. So that's all right. And then the next thing is to think about is the color. If there is a predominance of that turquoise and there's going to be some of the pink coming through, but not masses. Do I want to knock that back? And yeah, I really do. Um, so I might use the bottle, which is the more uh oh, it's not moving. Oh, doing that as hard as I possibly can. Is there any paint in there? Yeah, there is. This is one of the ones I filled with water. So I'm going to pick a spot that I think I'd really like attention drawn to. So I'm imagining that the viewer will view it kind of like this, coming in and around. So let's give the viewer something to stop at here and here and here and there and then continue that journey get a little more permanent rose over I won't put it there as well because it can be a bit not obvious that I want the viewer to jump up to here and up to here and up to here or maybe this high and then hopefully come around oh yeah that looks nice come down and visit this flower maybe. <laughs> Getting rid of those big drips and making, forcing them to move. It's the cerebral part of being creative. The creative part is where you paint and create like a child, um, like this. And the cerebral part are those rules and ideas that we've all read about. Theories that you can choose to accept or not. I'm gonna leave this bit like that. I kind of like that. Some, a big chunk of the underpainting has been left. That's quite nice. And I'm enjoying the way the pink has moved here, all around here. I kind of like that little bit over there. But this is, has moved in a line and I don't want to see that. So I might compensate. I could lift off, but I'm very aware that I'm not sure just how light these are gonna dry. So I'm just gonna interrupt that line and interrupt that line with what I hope is pure paint. It might be just very watery and that's the other reason why I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen. I'm pretty happy with the tones. I'm pretty happy with the composition. I, I can change it a little bit at the end if I really want to with a bit of watercolor or a pencil or something like that. Other thing I'd like to say is that it's not good to be in the middle of summer and doing a project like this with masking fluid over a period of weeks because some of the masking fluid has gotten too tacky and it may give me a bit of grief coming off which is why masking fluid projects are better if they're done within a matter of weeks if you live anywhere warm like I do which is Sydney and uh, summer is coming to an end but it's still very warm. Thanks so much for watching guys, I really appreciate it and I love hearing anything you've got to say about one of my videos. Thanks guys, see you next time, bye.